All right. Joining us on the line is, of course, the hardcore icon, a former five-time ECW World Heavyweight Champion. He was a former ECW World Tag Team Champion, one of the all-time greats, one of the most memorable wrestlers in the history of the business. He is, of course, the Sandman. Sandman, welcome. Yo, dude, wait, did you say five-time champion? Five-time ECW and World wait, Heavyweight I was a tag team champion in ECW. And a, and a tag team champion. something else, too? I don't know. It just seemed like I was something more. Maybe that's uh, just in my own head. The hardcore icon? The, one of the most yeah, uh, popular? <laughs> yeah, tag team champ with uh, two gold Scorpio. Oh, what a lovely time that was in my life. Obviously, you know, and so many people remember you hand in hand with ECW and the ECW arena and being in that area and obviously coming up on Saturday, October 12th for Super Crazy Wrestling. You will make an appearance at Tollman Joe's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the showdown at Tollman Joe's. That is r- literally right down the street from the old ECW arena. Man, and you're... you know what's so crazy? I spent so much time there in between matches before my match went on. I got them close from Tony Luke's. I get mm-hmm. something to eat. I go over there to have a drink. You know what I'm saying? My music's playing. Tommy Dreamer is texting me. Yo, ass, <laughs> let's get to the building. The law, dude. I just love that whole vibe, that whole that whole area right down there, dude. It's where it's never started. It is such an awesome area, and, and if anybody hasn't been there, you got to get over there. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, one of the best wrestling towns. Wouldn't you agree? If not the best wrestling town? Mm, well, yeah, but I'm a little bit like biased. You know what I mean? I'm a Philly dude. You know what I mean? But there's other places in Texas, other places in Florida. You know what I'm saying? But but none of them can say that they were the birthplace of a professional wrestling alliance like ECW. You know what I mean? Philadelphia is it. The birthplace of extreme. I mean, if you go to Philadelphia, you kind of immediately, especially in that area, you immediately think of ECW, you immediately think of extreme, you immediately think of hardcore, and I think you immediately think of Sandman. I don't know, I guess. I hope that's what people have. One of the icons, one of the extreme icons, and of course, on Saturday, October 12th at Tollman Joe's, it'll be the showdown at Tollman Joe's. The doors open at 6.15. The show is at 7 p.m. This is, of course, on Oregon Avenue. If you're not familiar with Tony Luke's or the ECW Arena, it's literally right across the street, right on Oregon Avenue. You can't miss it. Super crazy wrestling, and you will be there, of course, with your old buddy, Eric Sims, from ESS Promotions. And you can, of course, go to ESSpromotions.com for more info on that. And, of course, check out Super Crazy Wrestling on Facebook. Oh, dude, I just want to tell you, working with Eric Sims is such a pleasure. The guy's so easy. What a professional he is. You've been working with him for a very long time. Oh, yeah, there's a reason why, because he's a professional, you know what I mean? There's so many guys in in our business right now. Well, it's not even they're in our business, they're on, like, the outskirts of the business, you know what I mean? And they try and want to be one of us. Eric's one of us, dude. Eric... Eric knows what the wrestlers, how they feel. He knows what they want. You know what I mean? The dude's never done an athletic thing in his life, but he knows <laughs> professional wrestling, dude. And he knows how to treat us, and I love working for him. What a professional that dude is. What were your thoughts of kind of working for Paul Heyman? I mean, we're talking about working for guys and this and that. What were your thoughts about working for Paul E.? I don't know, but I wouldn't be talking to you on the phone right now if I was for Paul Heyman. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be the same man if I was around. As far as the Sandman character and becoming the Sandman, obviously you weren't always Sandman, the one we think of. I mean, at first you were doing kind of a surfer kind of style gimmick, right? Surfer character. Yeah, dude, that wasn't me. The Sandman is the guy that you see now. That was just trying to be a character. 
now I'm just the dude that I am. In the ring, out of the ring, it's just all me. It's very easy. And was that a lot of Paul Heyman's influence kind of changing you, or was that a, your idea to change you into, you know, the salmon that we know today with the drink and the smoke and that awesome entrance to us, obviously awesome enter salmon music? Todd Gordon's idea, 100% Todd Gordon. And it's such a cool, if you just think about it, anytime you hear enter salmon, anytime you hear that, that first beat of the Metallica song, you gotta think of Sam. I mean, that that is so damn cool, right? It's got to give you such a you know such a buzz of, of energy coming out. Well, yeah, it does. And people are like, "Oh, if I'm in a bar or, or something like that," they're like, "Oh, you want to hear your music?" I'm like, "No, dude, I don't want to hear my music at all." The only time I want to hear my music is when I'm going to the I like that. And was that kind of your idea to play that song, or were you saying that that was Todd as well as far as the Enter Sandman theme? No, dude. That idea came from a kid that was working for me back in the day. And like, a kid named Eric that was working for me back in the day. He's like, everybody calls me hack, dude. And you can explain that later. Wow, even Trevor mm-hmm. calls me Hack. My name's not Sam, man. My name's not James. Everybody calls mm-hmm. me Hack. He'd be like, Hack, he goes, I got this great song for your entrance. And he played it for me. The kid had been working for me for like probably like four or five years. He was a metalhead uh, back in the day. And then uh, that song came out. I heard it once, and I'm like, bam, that's when his song can't get any more perfect. I mean, as far as music and wrestlers, I don't think you can get any more perfect than that. And then you mix in you walking in the crowd, a part of the entrance, then the drinking and you know, the smoking. But, you know, I think everyone thinks of the beer, crushing the beer, sometimes feeding the fans the beer. I mean, that's just so iconic and, and so awesome. You just absolutely love that entrance and being able to do that. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> So cool. I mean, you just think of that and you just think like, man, that is just like so cool. You don't really see that, you know, in PG wrestling, obviously it had to be ECW, it had to be someplace like that where it was going to be more obviously adult oriented than anything else. No, dude, it was just like, it was totally organic. Like it just, it started at a little bit of this and a lot, like it came out with a Molson bottle with a woman at first. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it just built and built and built and built to, you know, what, what like the crescendo was, me doing my entrance, checking a six pack with the fans bleeding, getting into the ring. You know what I mean? It was just, I don't know. It, it wasn't ever planned. It just happened. So cool. I, I mean, I just remember being younger and seeing like, wow, this is so awesome. Like, who is this guy? Like, this is this is something, you know, you don't see every day. There's something I've never seen before. I mean, this is so cool. But that's like the epitome of ECW. You almost watch them and are like, this seems more real than anything else that I'm watching. Well, yeah, I guess. And as far as the Singapore cane, was that also your idea to kind of add that in? Because whenever you think of Sam, and obviously, you know, you think of the entrance, the drinking, and smoking, but you think of that Singapore cane as well. Uh, that was Paul Heyman's idea. You really took to it, though. I mean, you really you know, adapted it to everything, and it's so just like kind of whenever you see you, you always see or think of the Singapore cane as well. Oh, yeah, I, it adapted to me, I adapted to it, I don't, I don't know, Dreamer helped me out a lot, dude, he just let me beat the shit out of him with it. <laughs> oh, I remember that, you uh, basically got him over, I mean, not everyone remembers him as being a, such a big face and being kind no, of... No, 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 no. <laughs> I did not get Tommy Dreamer over. We got over together. Yes, okay, good point. I yep. was doing the beating, but we were getting to to where we both are today together. 
You know what I mean? It wasn't yep. like I'm beating him to get myself over. He he's taking fucking the ten lashes to get himself over. It was, and we didn't. And neither one of us had any clue as to what would what that would fucking encompass twenty years later. You know what I mean? But we were sharing each other's bodies and sharing each other's ideas and just trying to. To just do something different, dude, and, and we did it, and we didn't even know we were doing it when we were doing it, and now we just maybe in the last like ten years we realized how we literally changed the game. There is no doubt about that. ECW changed the game, did so many different things, like you said, so many unique things, so many things. I feel like where you wouldn't think necessarily, like you said, it's going to get over, but it got both guys over, and it was so you know, cool and unique for the time, but who would have thought you just beat the shit out of the guy with a Singapore cane and it's really going to elevate you and the crowd really, really bought into you guys big time. Yeah, no, like when it's happening, you just don't even know what's happening. You're just doing what you feel like. And all right, I'll, I'll give you an example. After ECW, there was like that fucking company out of out of uh, Jersey. Um, the dudes where they started using weed eaters and shit like that. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, CZW, yeah, yeah, Combat Zone. Yeah, all right, here's the difference. ECW, there was a there was violence for a reason. Whether it was girls like beating the violence, or whether it was like. Uh, fucking pushing a guy off the scaffold that was a violence. There was a reason for it, dude. And and that's what Paul Heyman was so great at, just making a reason and having a storyline behind all the violence. The Super Crazy Wrestling Show on Saturday, October 12th, coming up at Tollman Joe's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's going to be the showdown at Tollman Joe's. And, of course, doors open at 6.15, showtime's at 7.00. It is off of Oregon Avenue, right by the ECW Arena. Check out Super Crazy Pro Wrestling on Facebook and, of course, ESS Promotions as well. Sam, man, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Got to go.